Welcome back to the joy of numbers. Let's get a couple of definitions straight before we jump into the meat. Let A and B be integers. We say that A divides B if there is another integer K such that B equals K times A. We say that A is a factor of B and B is divisible by A. This is written like this and it's read A divides B. Now, for some reason, I can remember this piece of notation being confusing at first. I knew a teacher always used to introduce this as the Gazinta sign, as in A Gazinta B. Strangely, that seemed to help. So I know it's a bit silly, but silly things are often memorable. So if that's helpful, that's a free one. Anyway, for example, 5 divides 15, 7 divides 91, uh, 1 divides everything. The highest common factor of A and B is the highest common factor of A and B. And we're going to write it like this. For example, the highest common factor of 21 and 15 is 3. If the highest common factor of two integers is 1, we say that they are coprime. For example, 16 and 23 are coprime. Given A and B, how can we find the highest common factor? Well, if we knew about prime numbers and factorizations and stuff like that, then we can use those, but we don't yet. And even if we did, there's a much, much better way. Finding prime factorizations is time-consuming and wasteful. We don't care about all of the factors of A and B, just the highest common one. From now on, I'm going to call the highest common factor D, and we might as well assume that A is greater than B, otherwise we could just swap them around. Here's the idea. D divides A and it divides b, so it divides a minus b. But it also divides a minus 2b, and a minus 3b, and so on. So we can keep subtracting copies of b until we get to the smallest non-negative remainder, say, r. So we can write a equals q times b plus r, and d divides a and b, so it must divide r too. Now, What's the highest common factor of r and b? Well, from this equation, any factor of r and b must also divide a. So actually, the highest common factor of a and b is equal to the highest common factor of b and r. But r is smaller than a, so if we iterate this process, well, hang on, it, it's a lot easier with actual numbers. Let's find the highest common factor of 117 and 51. See, 117 is 2 times 51 plus 15. So 2 is our q and 15 is our r. We know q is 2 since if we tried to increase it to 3, say, r would become negative, which isn't allowed. So the highest common factor of 117 and 51 is the same as the highest common factor of 51 and 15. Iterating, 51 is 3 times 15 plus 6. So the HCF of 51 and 15 is the same as the HCF of 15 and 6, and so on until the remainder is 0. Then from the bottom line, 3 divides 6, so the highest common factor of 3 and 6 is 3. So the highest common factor of 6 and 15 is 3. So the highest common factor of 15 and 51 is 3. So the highest common factor of 51 and 117 is 3, which is exactly what we wanted to find. So note, the highest common factor is always the last non-zero remainder. Now, normally this would be the point in the video that I provide a proof, but we've actually already proved everything we need to know. This procedure terminates, and the last non-zero remainder is the highest common factor. The procedure is called the Euclidean division algorithm, and it's a contender for the best algorithm we know. It's ridiculously fast, even on large integers. It's way, way faster than prime factorization. It was first described by Euclid in his elements in around 300 BC. Now, Euclid's books are actually about geometry, and at that time, the Greeks thought of numbers as lengths. So, Euclid thought about his algorithm in a very geometric way. Here's a picture of Euclid's algorithm applied to 117 and 51. The big rectangle has side lengths 117 and 51, and it's divided up into squares. The side lengths of each square correspond to our r's, and the number of squares of each side are our q's. Now, your turn. 
It's very hard to learn maths without actually doing something. At the end of each video, I'm going to provide a few routine questions to check that you've understood the material. They shouldn't take too long. If the situation warrants it, I'll ask some more challenging questions too. I may provide answers for some of these questions in future videos, but in general, I probably won't. This is healthy. Please don't spoil the problems for others by commenting solutions, but do feel free to provide hints. So, 1. List the factors of 24 and 35. 2. Find the highest common factor of 17,562 and 14,643. 3. Find the highest common factor of 7,133 and 5,349. And a challenge. I've said that Euclid's algorithm is fast. Can you find a pair of numbers that takes more than 25 steps to terminate? And given the number of digits in A and B, can you describe how long the algorithm takes in the best case? What about the worst case? And what about on average? Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, comment, favorite, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I'll see you back here next time. As always, thanks for watching.